How does all this end up here? And why is it leading to men dying in their 20s? I want to investigate the issue with global e-waste. Is it linked to globalisation and why is it causing injustice in the world? Hey, it's Ellie and if you haven't already, press the subscribe button below if you're interested in geography or studying it at all at school. So what exactly is e-waste? E-waste can be anything from a mobile phone to something with a wire or a battery, such as a toothbrush, also something like a toaster or even a fridge. And what's the issue? The issue is that there is so much of it in the world today. E-waste makes up 70% of hazardous waste in landfill and that's because it contains hazardous material such as lead, mercury, cadmium and chromium. Now, the scale of it is huge. According to the Global E-Waste Monitor, the amount of e-waste per year was 44.7 million tonnes. Or to put it another way, 4,500 Eiffel Towers. And if you lay them all out in one area, that would be larger than the size of Oxford. So that the amount is huge and it's also set to rise. So by 2021, they think there's gonna be about 52 million tonnes of e-waste. Now, the reason that is so bad is because if it contains this hazardous material, then it will pollute land, air, and also water. And this is leading to many deaths, particularly in developing countries. So if you have a look at this map, it is predominantly developed countries which are exporting e-waste and developing countries which are importing e-waste. In fact, Europe and the USA contribute to half the amount of global e-waste. Now, technically, it is actually illegal to be trading e-waste. However, it's not illegal to trade working electronic goods. And through shipping networks, e-waste goes unregulated and unmonitored and it ends up in developing countries. Now the reason why it goes to these developing countries is because there is actually a market where the e-waste is broken down and one country in particular that takes in a lot of our e-waste is Ghana, in particularly a slum called Agaboshi where 20,000 tonnes of e-waste goes each year. Now when e-waste is broken down and the wires are burnt then you can get precious metals such as copper and gold. And what happens in Agloblochi is you have these men called burner boys, mostly in their 20s, most of whom have actually moved from kind of rural northern Ghana. They migrated down to live in a city because of the opportunities. However, they end up in the slums because that's the, one of the first places that many migrants go when they don't have any money. And it is these burner boys who are at the bottom of the chain of the whole recycling process. So what they will do is they will burn the insulation off wires and they will extract copper. And then what they'll do, they'll trade that to then someone else who will then recycle it. Conditions are so brutal. People die in their 20s because of the fumes and the contamination as lead and mercury seep into the soil and the water and pollute the air. Greenpeace measured the soil here and they found it to be contaminated a hundred times higher to what is considered healthy. And then as these dumps become economic hubs, more people are attracted there. People live on the slum and there's more industry and that further pollutes the soil. There are 80,000 men, women and children living in Agloboshi. I think that the massive issue is that many, many children work there and they don't go to school and they don't know the impacts as well. And that's why people are dying so young is because people aren't aware of quite what it is doing to their body. And particularly as it is carcinogenic, which means it's causing cancer. And it's all because they are recycling the e-waste from developed countries and just trying to make a living. Is, is that fair, that global trade of e-waste around the world? Like that is causing massive injustices. If you want to have a look at what it is like to live in the e-waste dump in Agroglossi, Reggie Yates, who's actually from Ghana himself, he goes and, and spends a week in the toxic dump. And it's really interesting because he really gets to know the burner boys. I would 100% recommend you to watch it. I think it's really interesting to think about whose responsibility is it when we're looking at this kind of inequality in the world. Is it on the individuals, us, who have a new iPhone every year? Should we be changing our behaviours? Should we be asking, like, do we need this? How can we actually extend the lifespan of the products we have? Do we actually make sure that we are taking it to recycling hubs? Half of all electronic e-waste is from individuals. And actually lots of it, which isn't actually thrown away, people just store it in their homes because they don't know what to do with it. Is it on the government? The governments have said you can't trade e-waste, like should that be enforced more? But then if the economy has been built on it in a small area around the world, like whose government responsibility is it? And then also is it on the TNCs? Like they are in our globalized world, 
like they are growing through these global markets so they keep selling products and they are aiming at consumers like should we as consumers be judged for it when we have been driven by consumption and people saying like this is a new product this is what you need to buy this is the new iphone so i think it's really interesting to think about those players and their actions like individuals governments tncs and also at different scales the World Economic Forum actually puts forward a different model and says maybe we should actually have more of a circular economy. Now this is a really interesting idea to explore. So a circular economy is the idea of reducing waste, so waste actually isn't part of the economy but it is recycled into it. So for example, could we have something subscription based with our electrical products? When I was younger we used to have DVDs and CDs and you'd have this massive collection, whereas now you can just stream things online such as Netflix and also Spotify. Can there be something the equivalent to that where we are more like borrowing electronics and then recycling them instead of always buying a new one and then having to have this waste? It's just an interesting thing. It'd be interesting to see what you guys think about it as well. I've put a link to the World Economic Forum in here and they talk about everything that we talked about with e-waste as well. So let me know what you think. Hope you found this interesting and also check out that video by Reggie Yates.